behalf of St John's Scottish Episcopal Church in Perth, welcome to this Monday Thursday service. The word Monday refers to the command Jesus gave to his disciples at the Last Supper, that they should love and serve one another as Jesus demonstrated by washing his disciples' feet. Usually, diocesan clergy and lay ministers would come together today to our Cathedral Church St Ninians. The service would include the blessing of holy oils. We remember also the final meal Jesus shared with his disciples in the context of the Passover, when the people of Israel observed their liberation from Egypt. And so we pray together our collet for Monday Thursday. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ taught us that what we do for others, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Gospel is taken from the book of John, chapter 13, reading verses 1 to 17. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher? and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. 
Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Over the past 12 months, the whole world has been engaged in a sheer battle with a deadly virus. There have been many dramas played out in our communities as human beings have faced illness and sadly some death from this invisible enemy. The frontline soldiers in this war have been our healthcare workers in hospitals, in care homes and local communities. And our scientists have worked all round the clock to produce the vaccines that are now giving hope to all of us. But it has involved us living out a life that is far from normal. And yet by following the advice and the rules, we have played our part in not only keeping ourselves safe, but others as well. And that effort might be symbolised in one of these acts which from the very beginning health and political leaders have encouraged us to do. In other words, to wash our hands regularly and often each day. No doubt we would normally do this, but maybe not as often each day as we were being asked. But the washing of hands and so the caring for ourselves and others is a symbol of hope that will help to bring us out of this pandemic. Today is Monday Thursday in Holy Week. We come to the climax of a week full of drama from the entry into Jerusalem on the Sunday. And then on tonight to the arrest of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal and denial by two of his disciples and tomorrow, Good Friday, to his death on the cross. But before all that takes place, Jesus and his disciples sit down for a meal, the Passover meal. And into that scene, Jesus takes a bowl of water to wash his disciples' feet, a symbol of service. As John puts it, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Service to others was at the heart of Jesus' message and ministry, and therefore must be at the heart of the church's ministry. The washing of the disciples' feet, simple as it may seem, is nevertheless a powerful symbol and challenge for the church today to serve others. It's a Christian folk song of the 1960s written by the late Sidney Carter, Put it so succinctly. When I needed a neighbour, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a neighbour, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter. Were you there? A bowl of water and a towel. Everyday items in our home. But in the hands of Jesus, a powerful symbol of Christian service. But that was not the only significant event that happened at the meal in the upper room. For Jesus, aware no doubt of the forces gathering outside, seeking his death, extends the ceremony of the Passover to include a sharing of bread and wine, inviting the disciples to do this in remembrance of me. And so again, we have two ordinary items, bread and wine, to symbolise that kingdom of God that Jesus preached throughout his ministry, a kingdom of love and justice, of peace and forgiveness. 
And here was the beginning of a new community that would grow and continue to live out and proclaim that kingdom to all nations. A new community, the church, the body of Christ, and who would indeed remember Jesus and make him real in our lives every time we broke the bread of justice and peace and drank the wine of forgiveness and love. A bowl of water and a towel for washing, a piece of bread and a chalice of wine for sharing in a meal. They are both the symbols of and the challenge to us as modern disciples of Jesus, to live our life in service to others and in fellowship with each other in a community of love. Amen. Loving God, we pray for ourselves. Breathe your light on us. Help us know the holy in the ordinary. Water and towels, shoes and feet, salt and dough, lost coins, bread and wine. Have mercy on our unknowing. Breath of God, 
breathe on us. Help us know the holy in these COVID days. Grant us patience and trust as we wait for human touch and caress. Have mercy on our anxiety. Holy God, we pray for others, crippled by disease, disempowered by structures, persecuted by authorities. Have mercy on their pain. Loving God, breathe on others, blind to justice and peace, unseeing of beauty, with no vision of what they may do. Have mercy on their lack of sight. Breath of God, breathe on all, women and men. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before you suffered, you showed your disciples the extent of your love. You gave them the sacrament of forgiveness and remembrance, and you promised that you would drink it again with them in your Father's kingdom. Show us your love through your words. Restore our joy in the forgiveness you have won by your death and resurrection, and give us hope in the promise you have given of a feast to come. Live and rule in us, even as you live and rule with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs>